light the first candle of peace to remind us of the prophets who believed in God during dark days and who looked forward to the coming of Christ. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Good morning and welcome to Church in St Mark's this morning on this Advent Sunday as we join together in worship from our homes. Thank you to the Stockdale family for lighting the first of our Advent candles. Um, our announcements this morning, you can download, them, uh, download the Pew News from our website. And the main things to say is that uh, this evening at 7 o'clock we have another service online. Our service of evening prayer can be seen on our YouTube channel and on our website. And then this week on Friday evening at nine o'clock, we have our late evening office and Alpha is on on Thursday evening as well. And you'll be very welcome to join in any of those and the details can all be found online. As well as that, Pinnacles is out and if you don't have a copy at home, it can also be downloaded from our website and all of the details about everything that's happening at the minute is all on that. Well, as we come to worship God this morning, on this Advent Sunday, we remember the Lord who came and who is coming back again. So some words as we begin. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for the coming among us this day, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. I'd like to thank Adam for leading us in our worship this morning and can I encourage you, even from home, to sing along. It might feel a little strange, but let's worship God together as we sing our first hymn this morning. Come, thy long-expected Jesus. Come, thy long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in Thee. Is the strength and consolation, hope of all the earth art, of every Joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious king. Scripture tells us in Isaiah 55 verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purpose of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. And the words, if you join with me, will appear on the screen. We pray together. O God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish and we have not loved you as we should. 
For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to hear our Bible reading now from Isaiah chapter 11. The reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at chapter 11, the branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge, by what he sees with his eyes, or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash round his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Good morning, boys and girls, and thanks for joining us for our kids talk this morning. I uh, hope you enjoy our service and uh, I hope you got uh, a fun day planned for today. Now, I've used the word already a couple of times, that word hope, because that is what we're thinking about not only today, but in the next few weeks, a special word called hope. And I'm sure that we all hope for something. Perhaps we're hoping that after the service we can get outside or uh, do something special uh, together this afternoon. Maybe we've got our plans this afternoon that we're hoping uh, that we can do. Perhaps we're thinking about our Sunday lunch and we're thinking, you know what, I hope it is whatever kind of food it is you want, but don't forget to eat the vegetables, okay? The vegetables are important, they're good. Perhaps we're hoping, if not already, we can get our Christmas decorations up. There's a lot of people gone early this year. Maybe we're hoping that we can get ours up uh, in the next day or two. Uh, maybe we're hoping uh, to have our house looking festive uh, for Christmas. Maybe we're hoping that our teachers are going to start go easy on us in school. I know you've been working hard of late. And, uh, you know, usually when it comes up to, towards Christmas, things sort of ease off a wee bit. And maybe we're hoping, you know what? I hope there'll be less homework, a little bit more fun in school. Uh, maybe that's what you're hoping. Maybe we're thinking about Christmas itself and we're hoping for a big present. And we're thinking, I hope I get what I'm looking forward to. I hope I get it. Um, you know, maybe we're thinking to ourselves, you know what, I hope we get this vaccine soon that people talk about in the news. Hope we get it in our arms and that we can be with family and friends and do the things we want to be able to do without all these restrictions. Maybe that's what we're hoping for, I know. I'm hoping for that. I'm looking forward to that day when we get the jab in the arm and that we can, you know, just be with our friends and family in, in a more fuller way. I'm looking forward to that. But something else I'm going to share with you that I'm hoping for. I'm hoping of a white Christmas. I love the snow. I love the snow. And uh, if, if, oh gosh, if Christmas Eve, if the snow fell and we had a white Christmas, that would be amazing. I would love that. That's one of the things I'm hoping for. When we hope, we're expressing a want of something, aren't we? We're, we're expressing how it is that we want something to happen. Oh, I hope it'll happen. Or I hope, you know, you know we, we express a want for something to happen. We're expressing also a belief that it could happen. You know, if, uh, if there's no chance, well then, you know what, you've got no hope, you know what I mean? And we, whenever we hope for something, we're expressing a belief, you know what, that actually might happen. Now, there might not be much chance of a white Christmas. There might not be, you know, but I, there's still a chance. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, there's still that little chance. In our Bible reading this morning, 
we're going to read about how Isaiah shared words of hope to the people of his time. In Isaiah's time, his country was going through a really tough period. They'd been through a lot. They were going through a lot. And, you know, his people needed words of hope. And God gave Isaiah some amazing words of hope. But they're not only hope for his people back then, they're hope for us today. You see, what we see in this is that God told Isaiah to tell his people not to give up, to trust in him, to, to, to live in hope because a day is coming when there will be a great king, a great king who, when under his reign, you will know and experience wonderful things like justice and perfect peace. Isaiah offered words of hope and when he did so, he spoke of King Jesus. That Jesus is our hope is something that we're thinking about over the next few weeks. When Jesus came into the world, things changed for the better. And the movement of the church, of course, was born. And people have been living in faithful discipleship of Jesus ever since. And when he comes again, things will change even more so. More so into the ideals of Jesus' kingdom. Isaiah spoke about it in our reading. There's so much to look forward to. We get glimpses of it now, but there's so much more to look forward to. We have got so much to live for in hope because of Jesus. Now, as I said a wee while ago, sometimes when we use the word hope, there's always that sense, you know what, it might not happen. There's not much chance. You know, we've got lots of hope or maybe not a lot, not a lot of hope. Um, is there any chance that Jesus, the words of Jesus that Isaiah spoke of, that they won't come to pass? that what Isaiah spoke of, those words of hope, will not really happen. Well, no, because Jesus died and rose again. We know that what Isaiah was saying and other prophets were saying about him was true. What, what was said of Jesus is good and that we can believe in what he says. Knowing that Jesus died for our sins and lives that we might be his friends and that he loves us, and one day will take us to be with him, that gives us so much certain hope, certain hope. So much so that we can be thankful to him right now and we can look forward in faith with certainty for what is to come. As friends of Jesus, we should be excited because Jesus is alive. Jesus, our King, is alive. He fulfilled what Isaiah said would happen when he was born and when he lived and he's got so much more to fulfill in time to come. We can be people of certain hope because Jesus is our friend today and that through people like this we can be people of certain hope in helping other people become his friends too. One day all whose hope is in him will be with him forever. That's exciting, isn't it? We can be hopeful, full of hope because of Jesus today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are. The people, uh, uh, people who can look to you in hope. We thank you that we can trust you in faith and love and serve you forever. And one day, Lord, we know that you will return. But until that day, may our hope be in you. May we be joyful and know that peace that comes through faith in you. May we desire to live for you and for your glory. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you, Malcolm. Adam's going to lead us again now as we sing our second hymn this morning. Hark a thrilling voice is sounding. Christ is nigh, it seems to say. Let's sing together. is nigh, it seems to say, cast away the dreams of darkness, O ye children of the day. Wakened by the solemn warning, let the earthbound soul arise, Christ her Son, all ill dispelling, shines upon the morning skies. Lo, the Lamb so long expected comes with pardon down from heaven. 
let us haste with tears of sorrow, one and all to be forgiven. That when next he comes in glory, and the world is wrapped in fear, with his mercy he may shield us, and with words of love draw Let us pray. Loving Lord, we come to you in faith, asking that you might instill more of that hope that is found through faith in you. Help us to know that we can delight in you, that we can worship you, and that our hope is firmly placed in you, Christ the King. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Now, when you're presented with the question, do you want the good news or the bad news? Which do you tend to opt for? For me, it's the bad news. I like to get the bad news over and done with uh, so that we can move on to the good. Maybe you're the same. Whenever things aren't great, I always like to know that there's you know, something to be hopeful for, something to be, uh, to be excited about, something more positive around the corner. And I guess there's been a lot of bad news lately, hasn't there? I feel like I have to brace myself every time I hear the music of the news. But there has been some good news of late, hasn't there? News of a vaccine, a treatment that would allow us to be together as we would like to be again. The sign of a vaccine gives us hope. Well, this morning this and this evening and during the next two Sundays, we're going to follow a journey of hope in our scripture readings. As set in this context, of course, of the season which we're part of, Advent. And Advent is a season of hope. It's a season of expectation, and I hope that our sermon series entitled Hope is Alive will be a source of hope for us all. During Isaiah's time, he and his fellow people of Judah had much need for hope. It was probably uh, be quite confusing to go into all of the details right now, but very basically at the beginning of the prophetic ministry of Isaiah, under the reign of King Uzziah, you know, things were pretty good. Judah was a place where there was military success and political stability and prosperity. However, as King Uzziah's life was drawing to its close, the Assyrian Empire, its influence was growing and fueled by an ambitious and capable new leader who was, cons who was consolidating Assyria's strength and beginning to expand its borders. You know, there was a, t there was a cause for fear in Judah. And then domestically, there was growing class differences in Judah between the wealthy and the privileged elite and the, and, the, and the oppressed poor. Injustice was making a mockery of the nation's devotion to the God of justice. The belief in God in, in, as, as being the true king of the nation was eroding and the nation was moving from being what it was supposed to be, a, a light as a nation, as a land, to the world around, a people serving the one true king. Under the next three kings, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, Judah moved from crisis to crisis, and King Hezekiah, he mounted a rebellion against the Assyrians that almost caught Judah, cost Judah everything. Judah was among, almost extinguished for the Lord, but the, for the Lord's miraculous intervention. Isaiah's prophecies were set in a time of crisis and concern. And you know, when we look around, it kind of feels like that right now, doesn't it? When we speak to one another, we speak about these strange times that we are living in, these worrying times. We're just not sure about how things are going to go with Brexit and all the rest too. You know, God's people are to be concerned, yes, but we're always to be people of evident hope. And there's so much to get downhearted about, but we should not forget that we have hope because we trust in the one who offers ultimate hope. 
Our reading from Isaiah 11 is a declaration of ultimate hope, of good news that was not confined to the plight of Isaiah's uh, situation, Isaiah's nation of Judah of his time, but it's a message of hope fulfill, uh, to be fulfilled and great times to, go, uh, to come for God's children of all generations. We read in verse 1, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from its roots a, a branch will bear fruit. What a powerful image. From what appears to be a dead tree cut down to its root, a branch will appear and bear fruit, we're told. From apparent hopelessness, life will emerge. And what life it is. Judah had known several kings since the time of David, son of Jesse, who had been its greatest king. There had been many disappointments in their royals. They had some terrible kings. They had some good or reasonable ones also, but they, of course, were still fallible. The king we read in, in Isaiah 11 would be characterized by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Lord, he says, will rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. The king to come will be blessed with a God-given rule to lead God's people. How God's people would be blessed with such a leader, someone who would be characterized by a divine impartation of wisdom and character. And what would another feature of his divine character be? Well, we read in verses 3 and following, he will not judge by what he sees or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The king to come would rule with perfect justice. There'd be no need for appeal, because his decisions would be perfect. His justice would be perfectly imparted because of the unique insight and uninhabited first-hand knowledge that it would be his. His would be a legacy without scandal. His would be a reign without fallibility. His would be a kingship that could be rejoiced in because of its perfection. How the people of Judah must have delighted in this prospect. And when compared to the disappointments of the kings of their, of their time. What a message of hope this must have been, that Judah would stand again and be, they would have a leader with divine insight, unyielding integrity, unfailing justice. And what would the effect of this reign be? Well, life under this king will be like this. We read in verse 6 and following, The wolf will lie, live with the lamb, the leopard lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, the young will lie down together, the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The effect of this rain would be tangible in every aspect of life. It would have greater impacts even on the natural world. These verses illustrate how the kingdom of this king to come, a member of David's family tree, would be perfect, universal, and one of lasting peace. Surely this is impossible. Surely this is not possible. Surely Isaiah was being fanciful in prophetic anticipation. Surely this hope cannot be realized. Well, it's important to realize here that Isaiah is anticipating someone we can submit to and serve in his kingdom today. The Lord Jesus, Christ the King. He was not anticipating a king as known by his people so far. He was not pointing towards a good or moral monarch. He was not telling his people that, uh, that this would be someone whom they would expect. He was telling his people that a king would be born in their land, in the household of David, who, if he was to fulfill this prophecy, could only be God in flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now this evening, Jeff will reflect on some verses from Isaiah 9. And in that reading of the royal child to come, we will hear that he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his kingdom and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establish and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. The fullness of Christ's kingdom to come is ours to look forward to, to anticipate with yearning. The promise of the reign of the king is something to give us hope, hope today, hope always. Christ's kingdom is something that we are to seek and we are to encourage and pray for more of in our world here and now and it's something to strive for ourselves. Today we gain glimpses of how we should all be in the fullness of God's kingdom. How it is that we have something to look forward to and to be hopeful about. Worship, healing, forgiveness, justice, peace, all features of the kingdom of God. What is in the future, but also should be here and now. Empowered by him, we are to get involved in bringing about more of Christ's kingdom here and now by his spirit. Christ puts his hope in you and me. When we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done as on earth as it is in heaven. We're asking that the king of kings would change our focus, focus and our reality and that we as people of hope, being uh, who, who people of hope who are full of hope would actually be part of hope fulfillment here and now, that we would see and experience and do more of what it is to serve under the King of Kings and be a blessing to those around us. We should not be settled with life uh, being distant from how it should be. We should pray and yearn for more of Christ's kingdom here and now, what Isaiah was speaking of. We should pray for more of it right here and now. We should ha have hope for change. We should long to see the kingdom of God being more and more evident in our world, community, homes and lives. Seeking more of the kingdom of God, let us pray for conflicts to cease. Let us pray for peace. Let us ask that God would intervene where there's disharmony, whether international or in our homes. As people who desire to, to, to come under the fullness of Christ's reign, May we pray for more of that peaceful immediacy right here and now. And may we even pray, uh, pray that we might be peacemakers ourselves. May we long to be involved in peacemaking. As people whose hope is in the reign of King, uh, King, may we also pray for and act so that healing can be experienced. Provision can be found in places of need and protection and security that it may take away fear. As people of Christ's kingdom, let's pray and let's get involved. As people whose hope is in the reign of Christ the King, let us challenge injustices and seek fairness for all, especially the vulnerable. As people of Christ's kingdom, let us not stand back, but stand up for one another, particularly those who need help. As people whose hope is in the reign of the King, let us worship him as dwellers of heaven do today. We're told in scripture that we are citizens of heaven. Let us live out that identification as being a worshiping people, a serving people. May we pray that more and more people would bow to the King of Kings. And may we be longing to be involved in that telling out of his good news here and now. May more and more people become and be citizens of heaven. Yes, Isaiah's message is a message of hope in the one who has come and will come again. But as Christians who know Christ's reign has begun and will come in its fullness of time, this is a message that points us to the reality of what we should be seeking to see and experience more of right here, right now. As people of hope, it's not just about waiting for better things to come. As people of hope, it's about getting involved and being agents of hope to the world around us that needs to know more of the perfect king of love, mercy, justice, and peace. As we respond to Isaiah's prophecy of the reign of the king, may we long to see more of his kingdom. 
Let us not look forward in hope of what it is to come when the rain is experienced in its fullness. Let us not only look forward to that, I should say, but let us hope that we have a Christ-like attitude within and that he might characterize our prayers and our actions and as people of faith and members of his kingdom today. Our passage from Isaiah 11 is a promise of hope that is found in Christ, Jesus, the King of Kings. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our living hope, we come to you in faith, and Lord, we ask that we might see more of your kingdom in our midst right now. We thank you for the promise of hope that we have in this passage, and we look forward to that day when we experience the fullness of your reign. But Lord, as people of hope in you, we ask that you would help us to be agents of your message of good news, be peacemakers, standing alongside those who struggle, be, be justice bringers, help your church to characterize your kingdom right here, right now. God, we invite you by your spirit, in the name of your son, to bless us in worship and service of the King of Kings. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Malcolm, for that wonderful message this morning as we start off our Advent series. Can I invite you to respond now with me as we affirm our faith together in the Creed, in a form of the Creed, in response form. Your, the words uh, will appear on the screen for you to respond with me. So do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jeff, uh, Jeff is now going to lead us in our prayers of intercession this morning. On the collect for the first Sunday of Advent, Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, this Advent, help us to remain focused and may our hope always be in you. When we encounter pain, whether physical or mental, help us to be patient. When we are afraid, of what the future may bring, help us fix our eyes on you. When we become self-obsessed, help us to lift up our eyes to the lives of others and to offer friendship, comfort and support. God of love, we pray for the needs of our world, hear the cry of those who yearn for love, fractured families, broken homes, for people who feel neglected, unwanted or alone. God of justice, we pray for countries where people are ill-treated, persecuted and oppressed. Hear the cry of those who yearn for justice. God of peace, we pray for countries where there is war and violence. Hear the cry of those who yearn for peace. And today we also pray for Archbishop John. We especially ask for protection and rest in the midst of his numerous responsibilities. We also pray for the work and witness of the Mother's Union in our diocese and throughout the world. We give thanks for the faithfulness and support of the Mother's Union here in our own parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we commit to you those who suffer in mind or body and for the people who care for them. We pray for those who mourn, comfort all those whose hearts overflow with grief or who live with unanswered questions. 
Bring meaning to those whose hearts are cold and empty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you know the times when uncertainty sometimes takes over and we doubt your call on our lives. We give thanks for this moment to pause. We ask for your grace to trust you, whatever may come our way in this life. Bless those who struggle to face each new day with any sense of joy. Bring light to those who live in darkness. And Lord, we pray for the Nor Northern Ireland executive. Grant them wisdom, discernment, integrity, and a sense of joined up thinking in the important decisions they need to make. We commit to you those facing uncertainty in their employment, for those whose jobs are under threat, and those who have lost employment. We continue to pray for our NHS and the multitude of unseen people connected to our hospitals. In these complex days, grant each of them rest in the midst of their busyness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remind us afresh that Advent is a season of hope and mystery, of anticipation and preparation. Teach us to sow seeds of joy and peace in our lives, that shoots of hope may spring forth, that we may live in harmony. God of hope, who brought love into this world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock upon which we stand, be the centre, the focus of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we acknowledge that our story begins with you and ends in the restoration of all things. Therefore, we will not give way to fear. We choose to live in the present moment. We ask for wise and discerning hearts. And we pray that in all things, in us and through us, your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And together we close using the prayer that we know so well, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. We're now going to sing our final hymn this morning, a great Advent hymn, Lo, He Comes, with clouds descending, once for favoured sinners slain. Let's sing together.
As we draw our service online to a close, let's say together, um, say together from our homes as we join together in fellowship. We say, be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives as well as our worship be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless, folks, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>